Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue day two of the playing stage coverage, minions have written home to their loved ones as they ship off for our next game, Cloud9 versus the Direwolves. But before we get our thoughts on the matchup, Fish caught up with Schoenfire to get his thoughts on the first time these teams faced one another. To be honest, the, the first game of the day versus Cloud9, I was, I was pretty salty that, um, yeah, that we, we were able to give them the game that easily. Like, even when we were behind, we weren't able to, like, stop the snowball. So, um, next time next time around, I really want to just be able to um, play like we play and play to our strengths. I think that's one of the biggest things that we did in the Brazil game. Regardless of opponent, we, we realized, all right, we need to just play to our strengths and play what has always been comfortable for us. I feel like we went a little bit too far out. Um, in the Cloud9 game, but props to Cloud9 and 1. I think that today was a, a lot of, a bit of sweet day. A lot of lessons learned, and I, and I felt really good about our performance in the second game. All right, well, I'm glad that Shermfire is focusing on the good side of it, because their Team 1 performance was very, very good. In fact, faster than both, both games that we saw out of Cloud9 on that day. However, that one was not exactly what we wanted. Yeah, but they played to their strengths on the side of the Dire Wolves. And like he was saying about that, where they kind of went a little bit out of their comfort zone, then they went back to the tried and true Dire Wolves way, being up in their faces, playing aggressively, and we'll see if that works out against this Cloud9 team that has been smashing with a 30-minute game, a 27-minute game, and a 22-minute game as they're only three so far. Yeah, and how we were talking about it after their first match of the day, it was, is this going to be a 15-minute game now? So last time they beat Direwolves more quickly than that of Team 1. Is it going to happen again? As we hop into Champ Select, already a couple of bands coming in here from both sides as Trist and Jace taken away from the Direwolves as the Zaya has been given the respect and that's the Galio band away by the Direwolves. I yep. really, really like that band. The flexibility that Cloud9 now show is really, really good. Now, right now, Direwolves, they band away the Galio. I feel like Callista jumps up oh, as the wow. priority pick. When yeah. you ban away Zaya, this is like the most picked and the first round champion. That's because Callista is also in that same tier as her. And when you ban away one of them, the other one jumps up in priority. So Cloud9 able to snatch that up. Well, if you have a look at the last two best of fives that C9 were playing as well, the Callista did not look fantastic from Sneaky. So I could understand why Diables yeah. do want to take this gamble as, a, as opposed to any of the others. Because his Zaya looks brilliant. His Tristana has looked fantastic for months and months, to be perfectly honest. And now they're going to take away the Javan as well. The impact did look good on. Mm -hmm. And once again, utility for King on the bottom side of the map. This is the kind of Diables that we wanted to see. But Zaya, oh, sorry, Callista Rakan. Oh man, I don't know whether you were watching our Rift Rivals on the eastern side I, of things, I did, but that's where it jumped up. Oh god, the debut of that combo was disgusting. That, Hopefully the quickness nerf is going to help as far as how filthy that looks. But when that combo came out at the LCK Rift Rivals, it was like 100% pick ban during that tournament. After that tournament, the Callista was just such a high priority champion. Because of that, she came back into the meta and people realized how strong she was. Okay, and I've... We just heard word that in the pre-game lobby, uh, Chippy said round two, and Impact <laughs> responded with, please stop. Oh my god, what? Yeah, I know. The, yeah. Oh my. We, we need to squash the oh beef, my I think, god. In between these two. This is getting a little bit brutal. Cho'Gath is going to be locked in, though, in response to Chippy's <laughs> Jarvan on the top side of the map, as Fantix considering the Sejuani for Schoenfire. I, there's oh been, no, it's going to be locked There's in, been so like a Cloud9 it. meme every year when they've been at Worlds. Oh it's been the God. top die. It's been the body of these fools. You know, maybe it's just stop. <laughs> this is like, you know, <laughs> who yeah, are you again? I, who, are you, who are you? Just yeah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brutal. It's brilliant. Okay, so LeBlanc is going to be banned away, though. Braum is going to be the answering ban. Of course, has been a legacy pick for Destiny for a very, very long time, but it isn't necessarily something that stands out in my mind. However, the severe amount of Freljordian action going on means that I probably want to break up the Dream Team. That icy combination. Impact is going to be taking the Cho'Gath once again. Will mean that for the first time here in the play-ins, he's going to be doubling up on a champion. Smoothie going to be the same, same thing with Rakan three times so far. Jensen getting the respect there as the Orianna band away as well. Yeah, Rakan is just such a great champion in terms of 
versatility. He's one of the only Ardent Sensor users that has hard engage and a long distance engage. So you aren't just picking something like a Janna, a Soraka, a Sona, anything like that, that just buffs somebody up with the Ardent Sensor. But he also has very long range and can offer kind of these engagement tools to a team. Okay, the Alistair being considered here, and I actually like it. I mean, we were talking about yeah. Alistair versus Rakan earlier on today. It certainly means that engage potential is there for the Direwolves on the bottom side. Chippies has a decent matchup into the Cho'Gath. We're still waiting to see what Vantix is going to do, but Direwolves now on the red side are able to get these counterpick options against Cloud9. And still, I'm, I know I'm sounding like I have a lot of optimism here. This is <laughs> Cloud9 that has such an incredible record so far in the play-in stage. It's just that the Direwolves are setting themselves up to give themselves the best chance possible. Contracts going back, thinking about going back to that Rex side that he had a lot of power on, but Jensen, if you can pick the Syndra, you certainly should. I mean, this is part of his trinity of domination champions in the mid lane of old. <laughs> what is this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic I like neutral it. matchups into There's almost everything. Oh, he's playing with our hearts here. That could be a Cho'Gath jungle and a Yasuo top. Uh, certainly not. Don't think it'll that. happen, but actually, another aggressive jungler for contracts, potentially. Yes, it is. Oh, wow. This is real scary. Once again into the Sejuani. Vantix has the counter pick option, but what do you pick into a Syndra? That is terrifying. Syndra's very hard to counter. There's things like Fizz, uh, Echo that come to mind from old, Yeah. but they haven't really been seen in the meta much. Fizz jumped up a little bit. Echo of old, happen. like you were talking about. Ah, Vladimir. Of old of Vlad. Okay. Vladimir's this kind of is the a other Vantix one too, yeah. favorite from many, many moons ago. This is back when I was commentating the OPL. <laughs> I feel like I'm set up for this particular pick. We've Take got it, it. away. <laughs> but it's certainly another, one of those champions that does like to farm until that late game. Become that gigantic beast. You want to get as much farm as possible. And that is exactly the Fantix MO. So going back to last year's Worlds when Syndra was kind of out of control and Vladimir was there as well, uh, and Vladimir was the counter pick, uh, what happened was there was a kind of a development of Syndra wins in terms of she can shove the wave harder than Vladimir early and roam and kind of take over the jungle, but she loses one-on-ones after he gets some MR and some HP and damage. So you end up in this kind of, Syndra has to make something happen early to get her to a point where she can hit these critical breakpoints of one-shotting people or dealing enough damage to push the Vladimir out of lane and out sustain his uh, his healing, or the Vladimir just takes over the game and is very hard to deal with if you just do nothing. So Jensen, somebody that people say, you know, they play through him a lot, he's going to have to play a little bit to other people early to find some other place to go, unless they're just going to try to use this Ezreal to just dominate mid. Yeah, well, we'll see whether he's going to have a better time than Condi did in our previous game. Contract's probably looking at going... All right, I can do this one better. And we saw what he did. I mean, the, the kills onto Shernfire early on in the last matchup were terrifying for an Oceanic fan to watch because he was all over the map, just destroying the Direwolves left, right, and center. So here we are, Summoner's Rift for the second matchup between C9 and the Direwolves. Direwolves, it feels like they have a composition, feels a little bit more like them. And I'm excited to see what Fantix can do because you mentioned a lot of the things as to like what Jensen wants to do against this Vladimir, but as well as the fact that you just have the W to press whenever he presses his R button. And yeah, this was Chippy's previous tweet from last night. So all the roasting you guys can give, however, I will improve and come at impact even harder tomorrow. Well, here it is. Put the money where your mouth is. Stop. <laughs> like, oh, the stop impact it. stop is too good. But also, I'm going to take you back to yesterday. Oh, the, take me back. Sorry. The matchup yesterday was impact on J4, Chippies on Cho'Gath. It's the reverse. If you get beat in the reverse matchup that you just had yesterday against the person you're calling your rival, they get to tell you, just stop. Just stop. Just stop it. And, like, if you go back to how impact has been playing, especially over the last couple of months as well, I mean, he was playing, like, Maokai into Na and doing really well, and then he plays the reverse yeah. matchup and he's 60 CS ahead. Like, oh man, you do not want to take any matchup that's similar against Impact because you can see the direct comparison between Impact, who has been playing so, so well, especially this end of the split. He always seems to kind of turn it on towards the end of the split. Also got more reps with Cloud9 after they stopped rotating him and Ray around. Yeah. And now they've allowed Contracts to develop more of a you know, aggressive style in the jungle. We'll see what he does here with this red buff. Because you can take this with a leash very early and get to the mid lane by two minutes like on the dot. Well, sneaky and smoothie. 
are going to be able to head down towards that bottom lane quite quickly. Same thing going to happen here for the Direwolves as Shurnfire is getting some help. And yeah, this is what you're talking about, Contracts. Hey. Thinking about where he wants to go next. Oh, wow, really? Okay. This isn't solo queues, Irene. No, I'm I'm saying these are like <laughs> this is the worst camp for Ezreal to do. All right. Maybe like, he's just going to take some popcorn chicken on the way out. He's going to take two worth of experience as he takes half his HP. Okay, yeah, it doesn't sound great. You pretty much never want to do that camp, but we'll see what happens. It may be something clever that he's planning. I don't know if this will actually feed into anything later, but uh, I'm not sold on it. Maybe just a casual. Yeah, he'll still get he's three. Got he's just like, going to go three. Takes away that camp. Now considering where he wants to go next, Chippies doesn't look like he's shoving things out, doesn't quite have the AoE without having that Q at the ready. And in fact, you can see actually utilizing the Vorpal Spikes to shove things forward very, very fast. But Ward comes down from Chippies and dodging out of the way of the rupture means that he wins that trade. That's a good news story. Ooh. Actually, this looks like Ezreal's going to go invade. Contracts is going to look for Shurnfire, but Shurnfire's actually bought him to punish this lane. He's actually going to get in here as they see him. They'll see if they can make it out. Okay, yeah, Sneaky's going to come down. Shurnfire looking for it, flashes forward, but does not quite get done. the stun. There it is, Permafrost comes down. King's looking for the kill. The slow's in there. First blood goes to Destiny. That's absolutely fine. Get the cow moving. Get him around the map. They couldn't make it out of that. Destiny goes in with the head buff pulverize, and they trade their top side jungle and red buff for it, but that is worth it to get this bottom lane going. And when I've been watching Cloud9 this tournament, it's been Contracts, Jensen, and Impact who have been performing well. Sneaky, still not back in that form just yet. I think especially Impact. This guy has been so, so incredibly good. You see always the top side of the map, despite whether he gets ganks or not, seems to be working extraordinarily well. It's consistent, very consistent. And right now, 22 CS to 14 feels great at the same time. Should be struggling to pick up the farm that he needs. Not as much of a big deal now that this bottom lane is in a great position to continue fighting. Smoothie still has his flash, Whoa. and there are no flashes here for the bottom lane. Shurnfire, repeat gank bottom. Sneaky, no flash. And once again, they shoved in. Cloud9 are kind of trying to flex on them. Well, Hebba Pol comes down once again. Grand Entrance doesn't get King, who can There's still get this damage. Shurnfire comes back. We've got a teleport for C9 Impact. Wants to get his way in here. Sneaky, the Ren comes down, but Destiny grabs another kill. King's gonna fall as Impact comes in, but Chippies is there as well. God, this cow is so bloodthirsty. It's a killing spree for Destiny. Contracts turns up, he wants that extra gold, but two versus three is not something that you want to go for. Yeah, this has been fantastic from the Dire Wolves. <laughs> But Chippies. Three and zero for the Alistar. Oh, the flash forward, the stun. Yep, the stun comes in. Destiny gets they the need damage, though. So much damage comes out as Chippies oh, flashes and drags his way forward. Impact gets one back, but it's five to two for the Dial. It's the stuns back and forth. The Alistar stun, then the Sejuani stun. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. They can't move. And that's a 5-2 to two lead for Direwolves at five minutes. Yeah, 1,000 gold is going to be the victory lap the Direwolves are going to, are going to take. However, they need to back this up. <laughs> it's an incredibly fed Alistair, okay? That's what they've got out of this. And the purchase that Destiny made is exactly what they needed. Now he can get around the map. The exactly. Moby Boots are there. Moby Boots. This before was Shurnfire going, all right, screw Jensen's lane. I'm not going there. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I saw what happened to Team One Esports when they tried to match two on two. Instead, he goes bottom, they get the flashes, and then they repeat gank. And it looks like C9 were trying to break a freeze from Direwolves. It was a perfectly set up minion wave in terms of manipulation. King does go down here, but Destiny gets the kill. They get the stun, they get the knockup and then they get that kill as well. And it just trails off from here where Contracts tries to kill Chippies after getting a decent amount of damage here. Yeah, and also Destiny hadn't gone back and bought after the first blood that he picked up as well. I mean, if he had have, he would have had a Sight Stone already potentially. Yeah. All of these items that he could have oh. utilized and oh, Chippies had the Baiting Shield as well. Ooh. So Stunning stuff. There's, I, I'll, I'll talk about it in a second here, but what Ezreal can do is you can E and flash during the E cast time, and it will put you on the very far side, like the double distance of your flash, because your E will go through. But then your E has that thing that will track and deal damage to the closest enemy. What happened was he didn't do it fast enough. Because if ah. you flash E, 
Well, speaking of which, Go that's going to be a dead impact on the top side. <laughs> Chippy sends his regards. Do you know me now? And Impact was smiling after the last time that he beat Chippies and walked away. Chippies might be the one smiling today. Two, one, and two. Hasn't affected the gold lead that much yet, though, no. because Impact goes back and actually has about an 11 CS uh, advantage. Yeah, but I still like this from Direwolves. Shurnfire, he talked about how they didn't play their style yesterday. It wasn't just the Sejuani pick that wasn't their style. It was more just the way that they were playing, right? Yeah. Now, the Sejuani pick comes through again and saying, it wasn't this, just that. It's the way they were playing. And now he's being more aggressive, saying, all right, I'm going to have nothing to do with Jensen, and I'm going to go to the side lanes and affect those because he has lanes that can actually pack some punch there. Well, True Shot Barrage comes down. Really good timing and game sense there from Contracts to know that he was taking it. It's not quite enough. Shurnfire just gets a little bit of help. Yeah. He just comes in from Sneaky. is still able to push this lane forward and has a 20 CS advantage over King. Now that they've shoved this, this is exactly what C9's been doing the entire game, so it doesn't look kind of awkward because they keep pushing, but they've been able to sneak contracts into that bottom lane through the bush. Shurnfire's just there to babysit a bit. Okay, so the wave shoving forward. Oh. Cancelled backs coming in here. Yeah. So they're going to start them back up again. There's a ward down yeah, as well, so Direwolves can stop this if they want to. They're, he's taking the jungle because Contracts is just sitting there. But this is fantastic for the Direwolves solo lanes. We were talking about Direwolves needing to play their style, and this is exactly their style. It's leave the solos on an they, island and they let saw him work back. as yes. They saw him back, they're going to go. And the arrow is going to land as well. Smoothie not going to be able to get out of this one. Throws down the quickness as there's the flat forward, nails it! Onto Sneaky! He's going to explode. King gets the autos. Can he actually find the kill? The oh. heal's there. That's going to mean it's enough. As Destiny just playing underneath Another. this turret. Tanks it forever. The Ignite should be able to get the shutdown, but the money goes to Smoothie. The Direwolves 8 to 3 against Cloud9. And you can see Destiny so happy about that. 4 1 and 3 on the Alistar. <laughs> what is going on? Shurnfire comes back down bottom after Raptors. They saw Contracts back on the ward 100%, knew he wouldn't be there. And Shurnfire was hovering the area and had the perfect timing to come down. His and Destiny's synergy has been on point to make this happen. Yeah, and. Oftentimes you talk about supports getting money as a bad thing, but when it's Destiny, when he's the one that wants to be getting around the map, you can see he's now on the top side trying to get in here against Contracts. Can he actually find it? No flash available for the headbutt pulvers. Jensen comes down. Good double stun for the disengage. And a bit of extra damage from Contracts means they can't do anything. But yeah, giving money to the Alistar isn't bad when he's the one that's going to be able to make these calls around the map and he can get tanky, get the engages happening. Yeah, and this just looked like they were doing exactly what they wanted to. And then, boom, the back comes through. Direwolves changed the tune of how they're laning, and Sneaky had already flashed, and then Shurnfire able to land the ultimate. I'm pretty sure Destiny also predict flash that moment as well. I didn't quite catch it, but made sure that he got the pulverize exactly where he needed to in case Sneaky was going to flash away yeah. at the exact instant. Went for the headbutt pulverize as he was flashing. Yeah. And believe it just connected regardless of whether or not it would have otherwise, but it doesn't matter. They still got those two kills and it was a necessary uh, execution. Well, Fantex going to continue to farm things up, falling behind Jensen, but Jensen, of course, pretty phenomenal player as far as laning phase is concerned, and Fantex wanting to scale his way forward. Kindle Gem is there, so it looks like will be the dash cannon coming out as far as item number one, potentially, unless he wants to opt into something like a Spirit Visage for ultimate defensive prowess. Yeah, so let's talk about this really quickly, because gold lead, almost like 900, it's been back and forth between 900, 800, 1,000, and we're looking at a large lead in kills, though, yeah. for Cloud9. Vantix just not really too worried here, actually Got going for the back. 1v2, gets it back from the Hemo Plague. Dive on the bottom, C9's bottom lane can't catch a break. Oh my god, the double knockup comes in, Chippies makes it three, Sneaky's going to be eviscerated. And Smoothie says, oh god, I gotta get out of here, the fate was calling and it's calling him away from that situation. This is how you get that enormous lead, we are talking, it's only been a thousand with this kill lead. You get these objectives, you do it when you have a wave on their side. Because every time Direwolves took a fight bottom, it was because C9 were pushing them in. This one they take with Direwolves having an advantage in the minion wave. They get the first turret, and now they're at a 2.5k advantage. And if you think about that situation as well, Fantix, 
gets ganked by contracts. The split second after he announces that that happened, Diwolves are teleporting bot lane. They're taking the turret. They're getting the kill onto Sneaky. He's 0, 4, and 2 now. This is a disaster for C9's bottom lane. Yeah, and it's been fantastic in the execution for both Destiny and Shurnfire. This is just a bonanza in the bottom lane. How did but that miss? Now you have to look at Jensen if you're a C9 fan, because right now they've got to camp this lane. They've got to kill Fantix. Oh, oh Splash no. is so close to coming back, but Impact is going to be able to grab that kill. And that'll be the turret. The one thing that C9 has going for them is that Jensen has a lane advantage in terms of his CS, and he's the only person on the team who hasn't died. This is going back to, because we saw signs of this not happening. Yeah, this save Jensen. me, Jensen. This is C9 living by Jensen. Living or dying by Jensen. As top out of turret is going to be taken down by Diwolves, whether C9 want to or not. So still able to even that one out. Of course, Fantix falling down means that the trade is in favor of Cloud9. And they're going to continue that onslaught towards the bottom side. So Diwolves may be dropping the ball just a little bit because they didn't necessarily need to let this one go. However, standing underneath this turret with four members means that the map is opened up and the Rift Herald is now an option. So Diwolves taking as much as they possibly can. You can see good vision from C9 everywhere around this map. Deep vision for Diwolves, however, on the bottom side. We'll see what they do with that Rift Herald. You want to be able to break open that mid turret, especially against a team like C9 that has Jensen. We'll see if they're able to move their siege towards that, because they got that bottom tier one, they got that top tier one. Well, they are going to converge on this very, very quickly. Does that go over the wall? Yes, it does. moves over the wall, yeah. And Jensen, there's the flash from Destiny, wants to find it. The Pulverize, he's waiting for it. Fantix comes in, Arrow's going to land, but Sneaky, he turns up. Hemoplay, is it going to be enough? Fantix picks up the kill as Smoothie gets the quickness, and that's going to be the end of the Vladimir. In trouble is Chippies, and he's going to go down as well, and Sneaky finds his way back into the game. The tower falls down in the end, but that's still a disaster for the Direwolves. Yeah, and that means that the Direwolves still have a 1,000 gold lead, but that just got evened up a little bit there. They lost one for three in favor of Cloud9, and the turret went over to Direwolves with the use of the Rift Heralds. They weren't able to push even more than that, but seriously, Sneaky picking up those two kills, exactly what you need to have a second threat on this team, because Destiny, great job here of going after Jensen, but they aren't completely in position yet. They use a lot to get him. The stun into the knockup, into the, uh, the arrow, and that's the chemo plague as well. So they kill Jensen, yes, but then there's this area on the side where Impact went over the wall, silences the J4, so he can't keep going, and he moved forward. If the J4 had moved back, maybe it's a different story, but he took some extra damage there from the turret. And some context there for that at the same time was the fact that Destiny had actually gone for the pulverized flash. So when he got Scatter the Week back, mm. he didn't have that cooldown. So it looked like he just flat out didn't do it. Yeah. However, that was still that was already on cooldown. It was good of him to still be able to get that headbutt in the right position and get Jensen out of the way, but that's why it looked a little bit strange. It was like he was holding onto the Pulverize forever, but gets the stun uh, previously gained anyway. So uh, that, he was a very confused Bramble back. <laughs> so he got tired. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's all tuckered out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fantix going to go into split push mode. Direwolves, as far as late game is concerned, they're still feeling fine. Of course, Ash scales great. Does have a lot of utility that she can throw forward. Chippy's going to be able to disrupt things with Shurnfire as well, and they will be tanky bodies alongside Destiny. And we all know what Vladimir can do. Does a heck of a lot of Ooh. work. and. Okay, lining Arrow. this one up. Arrow of Destiny will pierce the heavens as Destiny. Perfect follow-up. Shurnfire in there as well, and they're going to punish Jensen. This is just a stud after stud after stud. A one, two, we, three, punch. We talked about it in the bottom lane, and now it's happening on the mid lane too. They are just comboing CC perfectly on the side of the Dire Wolves. You think it's a Dire Wolves that just has you know, a pack leader and a lone wolf. Nah, and everybody's here. One, two, three. Jensen can't move. Yeah. Can't flash, doesn't even have it, but it doesn't matter. Well, speaking of can't flash, Chippies can. May actually have to do so as he cataclysms forward contracts. Okay, that was odd. He didn't have the E, so he couldn't EQ a 12 second cooldown on that. He could have just flashed. Yeah, he could have. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. The aggression is definitely good. Sends a message. And Chippies is actually ahead in CS now mm -hmm. as well. Destiny KDA at 15. This game 4.5. <laughs>
Support average is 3.8. I actually like to see yeah, but how many what kills. it was how many last kills? time they faced C9. That's that would have been a pretty disastrous situation. Yeah. The support average, pretty sure a lot of those are made up by assists, <laughs> not the kill department. Because Destiny still has the most kills on his team. Like, honestly, we would, like, we're talking about it as a good thing, but from a, like, high level perspective, yeah. having all of those kills on the Alistar is not what you want. You want those on that Ash that would have this very distinct oh, advantage Vladimir, at this right? point. Maybe the first kill is fine for the Moby Boots, but then when you have three on him, it's a little gratuitous because now he's getting things like the Righteous Glory a little bit sooner, and he has to make use of those advantages with the engage tools. But really, realistically, in order to in order to leverage a gold lead, it's just better to have it on the carries. But well, sure I don't blame I... him, because yeah. those are crazy fights where every auto matters, right? It's not your fault that you got that auto in there and your AD carry didn't. So once again, I do not blame him for it, but it's something that Dire was kind of wished was on somebody else right now. Yeah, the way I was talking about it was more, it's not as bad as you would otherwise think. When he is sort of that shot caller, wants to get underneath turrets, we certainly saw that he was able to do that. So as far as diving, and that's what the Dials want to do. They want to get this game over as quickly as possible. We know this is a team that plays from ahead or bust. I thought you said the Diver Wolves. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that kind of works. That's what's been their MO so far, but they're waiting for that Baron to spawn and trying to keep control of the river because they have all those outer turrets down and they have the Vladimir in the side lane. They're just trying to keep control of the top and the mid and try to keep some type of split push. But right now, C9 are saying, nope, up the gut, go down the mid. Well, it is going to be four versus five in favor of C9. So with Vantix only now moving himself over, this could be a potential problem. Shernfire still feeling aggressive, but doesn't want to take too much free damage. Vlad flank on the side. They got to do something here. Oh, nice! Massive ultimate comes down. Destiny with the follow-up, as that's a massive amount of damage onto Fantix. He did nothing this fight, and now C9, they're turning it. The rupture comes oh. in. Chippies finds the kill onto Jensen, but sacrifices himself. Is used as a good disengage for Direwolves, but they're still, it's a two versus one as far as those kills in favor of C9, and they'll even grab a turret. Smoothie had such a great save in there, and then Jensen scattered the weak, saved him, and forced an overextension from Direwolves. When we see that again, there'll be a very distinct place to look as Chippies jumps in. But that gets C9 really close to being back in the lead. Okay, so as the dust settles, Still going to be a Direwolves gold lead, but it's only about 400 now. And this is much like what we were talking about as far as WE was concerned, because yeah. you feel that C9 are that getting their way back ult. in. That ult was fantastic. That's Sejuani yeah. beauty right there. But watch, Jensen gets away as Chippies comes in, and he gets charmed and then stunned. You want to input your R, the Cataclysm. He would have dunked and killed Jensen then, and now it forces him to dunk, give himself up to Q Jensen at the end. And that was a big difference, because if he was able to do that dunk at the time, he would have gotten more people involved as well and would yeah. have been able to stop that Scatter of the Week, stop them from actually killing them off. And it also would have been before Diables disengaged from that fight at the mm -hmm. same time. At that point, Chippy's is just trying to get whatever he can from this situation, whereas it could have been King actually following through with a lot of extra damage. Speaking of which, oh, that's going again. to be the flash in. Yeah, Quickness is going to get all the charms, and Jensen explodes the Ash. In a matter of seconds, still had the arrow available, had his flash, but had no opportunity to use anything. It's the Rakan engage, even though it's completely uh, suffered some nerfs in the last patch, the width of it, as well as the speed, it still doesn't matter when you're just doing it that quickly and they're not expecting it. And he already input the commands. Like, he just did it so quickly and was able to pick him up. Yeah. And now the guy was on the back foot, and this is not what they're used to doing. This is not how they win games. And C9, we mentioned that if you throw yourselves at this team, reactionary play has been what they're good at, especially over the last couple of best of fives that we've seen them in. Yes, they've been sporadic. Yes, there hasn't been all that much C9 to watch as far as competitive, but that has been where they've been making things happen. Against CLG, it was exactly how they did it. And unfortunately, proactive play has not been working for this team. However, against Direwolves, it stylistically just doesn't matter mm -hmm. because Direwolves throw themselves at you over and over again with their aggression. So the Direwolves so far this game were incredibly good during the laning phase, where there were still turrets up, they could keep making dives. Shurn Fire had fantastic kill participation, still does, and fantastic routing. 
but then it hit this point where the outer turrets were down and Dire Wolves looked like they didn't know what to be pressuring and how to pressure it with their advantages. It felt like Surefire with everybody on C9, like Sneaky and Smoothie being able to run around, they got freed up and Dire Wolves were more confined at this point. Well, we'll see where the Dire Wolves can pull it back. They now have about a 300 gold lead, so that's still Something. okay. It's mostly because Chippies was able to shove that lane forward. Jensen going to be on a split push duty as well as Impact. They will be able to eat up some of this gold and get themselves back in the lead. But with Impact on this bottom side, does have the teleport. Means that Dire Wolves are going to be able to move over and grab some vision around this Baron. You can see a lot of wards actually set up around that top side area. They want to try and make a play here. But this game is now resting on a knife's edge, and that's not where the game wants to be if you're a Dire Wolves fan. C9 probably feeling very comfortable. Now they've pulled this game back. They can just play it slow and steady, get themselves towards some late game victories because a lot of their team fighting late game has Smoothie. been great. King taken down to about half of his health bar. Smoothie goes in once again. That's going to be Destiny gets charmed, so can't quite get the pole because he's ticking up towards oh. that stun. Oh God, Impact. He's just going to eat the ash for a breakfast. Sneaky gets his way out as well. Chippies dives forward, wants another desperation kill, but he's going to get punished. Fantix yelled at and destroyed as Jensen grabs the kill in the end, and they should be able to move over towards this Baron. Shern is alive, but I could imagine that not for long if he gets anywhere near that Baron pit. It's the trickle in, and we're seeing these last few engages be C9 hitting the go button. Direwolves, we saw them hitting the go button early. Oh, dear. And Contracts wants none of those smite steals. Well, that was cute. Winter's Wrath actually landing, getting the stun. Shern moves over, wanted the Arctic Assault, doesn't get it, and the Baron's yep. going to die. But he stayed alive for longer than he should have. Yeah, and now C9. That went from being only 300 gold down to now being 3,000. 4,000 gold in the lead. Yeah, almost. Oh, geez. Almost 4,000 up. That happened really, really quickly. Sadly. Yeah, well, it's that team fight that they were able to pull off in just a quick moment. And you think back to when this game was 0, 0, 0 in the mid lane and everything else was going crazy. Vantix now 1 and 4 because there's been so many fights that C9 start off. That doesn't stun contracts. Sneaky gets hit by the arrow afterwards. <laughs> but then Impact just jumps up. He's like, this Ash is just firing arrows. Stop. Yeah. Take a breath, Ash. Those mechanics. Yeah. Flash R. Flash R. There's no stone plate involved in that one. Just didn't need it. Noms him up. Too yummy. Okay, now with Baron buff, C9 looking to move this gold lead into the insurmountable territory and Fantix in trouble. Mystic Shot gonna fly over the top of him, but those sticks remain in the Vladimir. He's not going to be able to hold them off underneath this turret, especially with the extra magic resist these creeps have. C9 not looking to stop here. Chippies has to back himself out. He has no teleport, so of course C9 not scared about this at all. Schoenfire, what are you doing up that far? He is very, very tanky, but it's not going to be enough to Destiny save the turn. The There's the movement. They do get the massive knockup. Jensen in trouble as Chippies wants to flash his way in, but the rupture is going to be there to stop him. Cataclysm comes down as impact. They're just trying to get him out of the way. King free hitting in the back line, but it's just not enough. C9, so much damage as Sneaky jumps his way forward. Contracts, not a lot of matter, but he has the auto attacks. And Sneaky gets over the side. They're going to take down the inhibitor. And can they even push through and win the they game? They might be able to. They have a large minion wave here. They have Baron buff. This is 25 minutes in a game that Direwolves were in the advantage for so many. So incredibly long, but it's just not going to be enough. C9 looking much like what WE were able to do. The Nexus turrets are going to fall down. Direwolves desperately trying to make something happen. Chippy's not going to be able to as he's going to be taken down. We have respawns coming in, but with no top laner for a long time, it's still a four versus four. Smoothie makes his way back in. This guy has been playing like an absolute god today. Fantix with the Zonyas, but that's just going to prolong the inevitable as Destiny gets over the side. Smoothie gets the grand entrance. He's still alive somehow as Fantix is obliterated. Double kill for Jensen, Triple. proving himself on this one. Triple kill, exactly. And he's going to take down the Nexus C9. It was more difficult this time, but they're now 4 0 in the group. And they will have number one in their group moving on to the play-in knockout stage, and that is a heartbreaker for the OPL. They look like they had that game at the start. It was a great plan. They camped the bottom lane. They extended that to the top. Chippy's TP down, and they got first turret on top of it. They were set up for victory, and they weren't able to take it. Well, I, 
You say Heartbreaker, I don't necessarily feel like it is because they actually showed Cloud9 that they can stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe. especially in the laning phase. Shippies was able to get some work done, Shernfire showing why he was a man to fear here in this play-in stage, and him pairing up with Destiny on the bottom side, both of them, as far as utility, were having the performance that we really wanted out of this team and demonstrating that a top team in Oceania isn't that far behind the rest of the world, at least for the first 20 minutes of the game. The first few minutes of the game, this gold graph is going to look fantastic when you see yeah. it because it is one that Direwolves were so proactive, but the lead never got to an insurmountable place for Cloud9, and Jensen was 0, zero, zero and everybody said, okay, we can finally do the Cloud9 thing and have people come mid. As soon as your bottom turret is down, Smoothie's like, I don't have to be bottom lane anymore. Comes around the side, impact comes down from top, and then they're able to trident the mid and put pressure on Fantix. The mid turret was the first one that went down for Cloud9 over what went down for Direwolves. They had to use Rift Herald to get yeah. the, uh, Jensen's, and so you can see from Cloud9, even when everybody else is kind of feeding, Jensen is still able to step up and get the team to rally around him. Yeah, the stabilization was absolutely fantastic out of Cloud9, but they secure the number one seed in the group. And to break down how that happened, let's send it over to the analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Of course, Cloud9 locking first seed in their groups, incredibly impressive. But as we look at the draft, you can see it does feel like we saw a little bit more of Direwolves in terms of style coming out today. Yeah, 100%. This is the classic Direwolves. you got a carry top laner, a carry mid laner who would kind of be left to their own devices, set them up on an island, and give Shurnfire all of the rights to go towards a utility power bottom lane. And I think it's a situation for C9 where they're not necessarily experimenting because you see a lot of staple picks here with things like the Rakan, the Syndra, the Cho'Gath, but just letting uh, Contracts get a game on the Ezreal, get a feel for it. Maybe it's something they can pull out a little bit later. Uh, I thought he looked all right on it, uh, but there are a lot of other issues that came it, He game. looked all right, but Shurnfire looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. And as we load up this next replay for you, you got to see how well this guy performed. This is, of course, brought to you by Acer Predator. And I think the series of bot plays here coming in from both Shurnfire and as well Destiny on the Alistair was just immaculate for Dire Wolves. And I cannot understate this enough. This is exactly how the Dire Wolves have been playing. This is what makes them so dominant. When they get to isolate an elongated lane phase and then just allow Shurnfire to be that big wolf in the wolf pack and set up his bot lane for success. And huge credit to Destiny in particular. Yeah, a lot of these plays were set up off his initial engage and Shurnfire would come around from the backside after C9 were kind of locked into this fight. And then what ends up happening here is C9 actually get pulled into this game a little bit where they're saying, all right, well, we can collapse, we can punish, we got a double buff Ezreal early game. This is a nightmare to deal with. He's so mobile. It's a bunch of tanks. I can keep hitting them, but they get a little greedy here, and you'll see in a second that Contract's actually going to shift and try and go past the closest target to finish off Chippies instead of just hitting Shurnfire here, and that's when he overextends. Yeah, and then the immediate turnaround Chippies is then going to layer up the CC and just clean up Contracts, and this was kind of the nail in the coffin in terms of Cloud9's early game blunders. It was a big problem, too, because during that uh, Impact lost a lot of his summoners. They go top as well. They start killing him. And then, don't think they forgot about bot lane. They're coming down here one more time. And it's just a rinse and repeat so consistently coming to the bottom side of the map. And this is interesting to me, too, that Cloud9 kind of got drawn into this because we know them to be that team that always plays around mid, but Direwolves feel like the first team to, to maybe shut that down. Well, I think that's actually the correct way to actually attack uh, C9. I think what a lot of teams have been doing here is they say, oh god, Jensen's so scary, he's such a threat, let's try and control him. But if you look at North America, the best way to deal with Jensen is just kind of ignore him as best you can. L give your mid laner an okay matchup, even if it's losing, fall down 15 CS, it happened again here, but that's not the end of the world because you can stop the playmakers from coming to Jensen and exploding his lead. You saw Contracts had to go down bot lane, Smoothie was limited down there, Impact tried to influence the bot lane, and if you can snowball one of these other lanes, it really limits what C9 can do with Jensen. One of my favorite things that I've noticed about Cloud9 is actually how they use their AD carry versus their mid laner. They'll often send Sneaky up into a side lane, whereas a lot of time, like in my domestic region, the LPL, we put our AD carry in the mid lane. But Jensen is always there because Cloud9, everything is about them. They need him in that middle lane so we can attack the top lane, attack the bot lane. He's always there to make a play. And when you finally go mid lane, that's when things go wrong. Yeah, and that leads us into our next replay. You can see what finally does happen when C9 are able to play around the mid lane the way that they want to. And this is a big mistake out of the side of Direwolves here. You have a split pushing Vladimir. You can just focus on wave clear here and just force C9 to just sit around mid because C9 is saying we can't handle a Vladimir with this Syndra. So uh, we're all going to group mid and hope they fight us. And that's exactly what they do. And But they can definitely handle a Vladimir with a... Beautiful chain CC coming in from Smoothie and the more than enough damage from Sneaky to back it out. And at this point, it did feel like Direwolves just lost their hold on the game. But 
This is also exactly what Direwolf's biggest weakness is, displayed perfectly right there. Is yes, when they have an elongated lane phase, when they're able to just utilize and abuse Shurnfire's pathing towards the bot lane, it looks great. But as soon as those towers fall, as soon as things start opening up, it's questionable decision making about when to take the 5v5. As Mark was saying, they did not need to fight there. They could have continued to split push with the Jarvan and Vladimir, just cleared the wave and bought themselves time. Like the 1 3 1, you can't play the side lane if you're Cloud9 right there. You're just going to get bled out but they collapse anyway, they make the poor judgment call, and they get ripped apart. Yeah, it was risky. You can see maybe in there they're like, hey, we can win this fight. We know they have the advantage. Ultimately playing right into Cloud9's hands did not work out for them, but Cloud9 securing that first seed, we have to praise them for it. But as the explosive games stack up, make sure to call out your world's big plays on Twitter. Hit us up at LOL, LO, at LO Esports on Twitter. We're going to be sharing your tweets all month long. And after the break, Gambit Esports look to pick up their first win of Worlds versus Lion Gaming. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a tough challenge next. There it is, Permafrost comes down, King's looking for the kill, the slow's in there, first blood goes to Destiny! Oh, the flash board, the stun! Yep, the stun comes in, Destiny gets they the need damage run. though! So much damage comes out as Jimmy oh, Splash drags his way forward, King gets the...